Let your rapidity be that of the wind, your gentleness that of the forest. In raiding and plundering, be like fire, be immovable like a mountain. Be as hard to know as the shadow, and move as fast as lightning. The art of war teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him. Not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. It is said that if you know your enemies and know yourself, you will not be imperiled in a hundred battles. If you do not know your enemy, but you do know yourself, you will win one and lose one. If you do not know your enemy nor yourself, you will be imperiled in every single battle. If your enemy is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is temperamental, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Attack him where he is unprepared, appear where you are not expected. When the enemy is at ease, be able to weary him. When well fed, to starve him. When at rest, to make him move, appear at places to which he must hasten. Move swiftly where he does not expect you. When torrential water tosses boulders, it is because of its momentum. When the strike of a hawk breaks the body of its prey, it is because of timing. The best victory is when the opponent surrenders of its own accord before there are any actual hostilities. It is best to win without fighting. He who knows when he can fight and when he cannot will be victorious. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. All warfare is based on deception. Hence when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When we are using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. A skilled commander seeks victory from the situation and does not demand it of his subordinates. Two frequent rewards indicate that the general is at the end of his resources. Two frequent punishments that he is in acute distress. 
One defends when his strength is adequate. He attacks when it is abundant. Management of many is the same as management of few. It is a matter of organization.